My name is Stephen Tingay. Uh, I'm an astrophysicist uh, by training and trade. And uh, as James prefaced, uh, I've been involved in building radio telescopes uh, in order to study the universe all the way back to uh, the Big Bang. So that's, that's my day job. Uh, in order to do this, we need to build our radio telescopes in uh, remote locations that are free from human-made uh, radio interference. Uh, after an extensive process of looking around the world, uh, the best site in the world to do this is in the middle of the Murchison, uh, Wadri Yamaji country. And so over the last decade, we've worked to uh, build this radio telescope composed of thousands of these individual antennas. Uh, at Bulati Station in the Murchison uh, with the permission of the um, Wajiri Yamaji people. Back in 2009, uh, Charmaine and I um, met uh, some, somewhat by chance yeah. and kicked off a project of uh, getting astronomers together with indigenous artists to look at different mm. perspectives of the universe. And that first, um, that was called Ilgarijari, which means things belonging to the sky. And um, we'd embraced, the Yamaji Art Centre in Geraldton had embraced the opportunity to work with the scientists and um, astrophysics, mm -hmm. yeah, um, to come together and listen to the stories from a Western perspective, but also to tell our stories through the Yamaji eye. And Ilgarijari has um, taken taken the collaboration over um, throughout the world and across Australia and more recently we've collaborated through Shared Sky with South Africa and that's also been a great journey and from the Shared Sky um, with the Bethada, Bethada mm -hmm. um, Art Centre in South Africa producing the antennas that we have was part of that process, yeah. So we might talk a bit about yeah. the process. I mean, we've yeah. been working together for seven years. Yeah. Um, in the initial stages, I think it was fair to say that the two groups, artists and astronomers, weren't quite sure if we would be able to connect. No. And we uh, took it very slowly in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, we, we took a trip together uh, to the site uh, where the telescopes are being built on, on country um, and that really kicked things off. Do you want to tell us from your, like talk us through from your point of view how yeah. that initial interaction okay. went? Well for me um, working with the astronomers started in 2003 so you know I'd kind of been on this 13 year journey mm -hmm. and looking at going out to Bilardi a couple of times was an opportunity that we wanted to go out and see what was going to be done to the land, what the impact to the land was going to be. But we also wanted to go out because this had thrown us a really great opportunity to reclaim our stories and to tell our stories because of the impact of colonisation had told our parents and our grandparents um, to bury your culture and you no longer have to tell your stories because you're living a different way. So we really grabbed that opportunity to tell our stories and to tell our traditional and contemporary stories in Western Australia because they just don't get heard very often from the Yamaji region. So going out to Bilardi and going out to scientists was really quite strange at first, um, travelling out there 300 kilometres inland. We would pulled up at Mullawar, which is 100 kilometres from Geraldton, collected some more artists on that first trip. Um, there was about 16 of us, mainly female, uh, it was pretty quiet during the day. The scientists seemed to be uh, very quiet people. We didn't know, we didn't know how to actually talk to them. Or, special people. Yeah, special people. <laughs> and we were wondering, well, you know, when's this conversation going to start? When are we going to do something? Um, then as the sun started going down, something started happening to these people. Like, they, they started... We didn't grow claws and fur. They, they started changing, <laughs> like, and started becoming more... The darker it got, the more animated they got. And, um, you know, started pointing and looking at the sky. And, um, well, we started getting really comfortable because this is what we like doing. We've grown up looking at the stars. Um, we can't believe that people live in urban areas and the cities and 
We know because of light pollution, but they don't look up. They just look straight ahead or straight ahead, I guess. Um, so they were beginning really animated and the really crazy thing was the film crew wanted to build a campfire because of this romantic notion of sitting around a campfire and yarning. It was like... Um, it was warm. It was 50 degrees actually the day we went out there. So by the time the fire was lit, it, was, it would have been about 35, 40 still. So some of the older ladies thought, oh my goodness, um, you know, sitting around this campfire, but that's what they wanted and that's what we, 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 were, we were going along for the journey. Um, earlier in the day, we'd gone into a, and at 50 degrees, we'd gone in to a transportable in the middle of the Murchison, which had all these antennas around them, had all these, um, it wasn't supercomputers then, I don't think. No, it normal. had all these instruments inside. And there were these scientists from around the world sitting in this transportable. And they were explaining to us that they were collecting sound waves from space to convert into data to make these 2D images which the scientists can then study. And one of the artists said, oh, yeah, OK. You know, it kind of went over our head and we're saying, oh, it's easier for us to just stick to our traditional stories. We don't understand the rest of this. Um, so one of them had said, Steve, can I listen to that noise? So one of the scientists turned on, it's just static. And she wouldn't believe him. She didn't think that was noise from space. So, well, she did, she, well, I think perhaps over time we've convinced yes. some people that this actually works, but yes. some of the artists uh, bought into this very quickly, quickly and in yep. fact some of the artworks that emerged were very interesting uh, interpretations of waves travelling through space yep. and picking up on in that interpretation. But uh, yeah, what, what you say about the, the sun going down and yep. the stars coming out, um, I think we'd sort of found our point of connection, yeah. the night sky. Um, and I, I guess when it comes to indigenous, non-indigenous discussions in Australia, there's obviously a massive amount of um, controversy over country and land. Yeah. But the thing about the sky is that nobody can own it. Mm. You can't appropriate the sky. It's literally impossible. Um, and it's also part of the shared heritage of all people on earth and everyone who's sat under the stars wonders about what it's all about yeah. and has, has done so over history. So, yeah, we'd found our point of connection. Yeah. And from that point on, uh, things really accelerated. So the artists got greatly involved and produced, well, how many pieces of art we did they produce? produced? The first exhibition we produced 180 pieces of artworks, which travelled um, from Geraldton to Perth to Canberra to Washington and then to Europe. Um, and we've since created um, artwork that's gone on the catwalk in 2010 in Paris, London and Melbourne and um, Perth. So we've done a whole a lot of collaborations that have come out of the Ilgarijari journey, um, which is what I call Il Ilgarijari things belonging to the sky. But one of the most important things at Bellati and talking about the sky itself is with the impact of colonisation on my people, one of the things that the colonisers did not stop was our connection to the sky and our way of using the sky, because the sky mirrors the land, um, our way of using the sky to tell our stories. Um, doing this collaboration wasn't without its cultural politics and we had to, be, we had to tread very lightly because the sky is a very sacred and important place as well, to, t to work out how we would tell those stories. And we concentrated on bush tucker, we concentrated on the season's foods, on weather patterns, and tracking of animals during the um, bush tucker seasons. But one of the most important things, I think, which the artists were really thrilled about was that some of the scientists had never seen the emu in the sky which we talk about and paint about extensively because to us, the star, the, a lot of non-Aboriginal people, when they look at the sky, they look at stars and the shiny thing. We look at the dark matter in the sky and this is very important to us. So we were really um, pleased when there were a couple of scientists there that we could show them the emu in the sky. 
at well, Pilates. I was, I was one of them. And you were one and of I, them. I remember yeah. that and that will stick with me as one of the most vivid memories I ever have. So I'm a, I'm a tragic, of course. Yeah. I've, I've been hooked on astronomy since the age of six. And as you say, you grow up with uh, the Greek and Roman myths of the sky, which are all about connecting the stars and drawing yeah. constellations of various different things. Yeah. Um, and so that was my knowledge of the, the sky. Yeah. That, they were my stories of the sky that I'd learnt. Um, mm. But the emu in the sky is different, as you say, and consists of the, the dark patches that run along the middle of the Milky Way galaxy. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's an enormous structure on the sky. It's like almost 90 degrees. And I've been I'd been staring at the sky for 45 years and had never seen, seen this. But when the artist pointed it out to me on the sky and drew it, uh, it was one of those moments where spine tingling and every time I think about it, it's exactly the same. Yeah. Uh, and for me to be looking at that literally for 40 years and never seeing it tells me a lot because it is the most blindingly obvious representation of an emu in the sky. Once you've seen it, you can never not see it. Uh, so the storytelling uh, went both ways, didn't yeah, it? Uh, yeah. We learnt a lot, and uh, I, I guess you guys learnt well, a lot we as well. We learnt a lot too because, you know, we got to have opportunities that not a lot of other people would have looking through powerful telescopes and then being introduced to um, constellations and nebulas and things that we would not have spoken about 13 years ago we can now go and have a look at and we have conversations in the art center about different images that come out um, being shown um, different galaxies in the sky and being shown one no one of the things that really stood out at Bellati on that first trip was that we never ever thought of the northern hemisphere and the western constellations being upside down in the southern hemisphere. That was kind of crazy to us and because we hadn't thought of it before in that way. But just like the scientists and a lot of other people don't think about the sky in looking at the dark matter and looking at the shiny, so that shows the two different cultures. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of things that we do share and we all do look up at the sky. Mm. So the collaboration has been really, um, it's lasted like 13 years and moving, it's still moving along and... Um, so maybe in the last few minutes we can yeah, talk about yeah. the object that takes the yeah. pride of place as 101st. Yeah. So displacing that was other, from, other people's choices. And so. that was from, yes, which we heard about today. Yeah. Um, that very, was in very, two, very proud that it's a... Uh, 2014, yeah, actually, the Yamaji art artists who were really upset that the rest of them couldn't come down, but some are painting for exhibitions. But we're really pleased that the Western Australian Museum had chosen these objects, mainly because the way and the whole process that the objects were chosen, one, they are contemporary objects, two, it's a collaborative process which belongs to not only the scientists and not only to the Yamaji artists, but it belongs to all of us because those antennas are also belong to the rest of the world in the data that they are collecting. And three, because the process has been really ethical in the way that they have been acquired and the way that the museum have spoken to the Yamaji people um, right down to the process of having me as an Aboriginal person sit up here on the stage this afternoon and talk to you about Yamaji things. So we were really pleased and um, really proud that this has happened and the Western Australian Museum had chosen the objects in that manner. Um, the object for us, it kind of happened in the last um, trip to Bellati in 2013 or 14. 2014. And I'd seen, I'd seen them before and they look like spiders and you know, they look like all these little spiders on the ground and everywhere. And when we got out there, I'd said to Steve, I wanted to make an impression that we'd been there, not just a group that arrived in a space and then leave and you don't know that they've been there. So I said to Steve, can I wrap some of those in wool? Can, I, can we touch those and can we do something with them? So... My, mind you, you were pointing at one of the operational antennas that was currently collecting data. 
and I had to think for five seconds uh, and do a quick sort of mental calculation of how wool would change the electromagnetic properties of our antennas. And then I thought, ah, oh, bugger it, uh, it's probably okay. Yeah. Uh, and so then Charmaine and some coll colleagues got in the amongst the antennas and started yarn oh, bombing them. Is that yeah, the right? yarn bombing them, and you know, like it was, um, it was about 38 degrees then too, so it was still quite hot. Yes. But then before we left, after we did that, and, and we'd put our energy on them, and and were touching these ob these man-made objects that kind of didn't belong to our culture, um, I'd said to Steve, can I have some of those? <laughs> I, don't know what he I was, was just so used to saying yes by then that I just <laughs> said yes. <laughs> and I was really surprised and I said, can I have some of those? And then the artist had said, what are you doing? Because we were under pressure to produce all these paintings and we did um, really large paintings about the Western constellations um, did in an Aboriginal style in artwork. Um, then I brought the antennas out and I said, we're going to make an installation and it's going to be called Ngala Iamana. And that means searching for something because these fellows are out there searching for something and we want to be able to, if it's a collaboration, we want to be able to use some material from this scientist world and from the other world and then put our energy on it and touch it as well. And we want to be able to show how the sound waves are coming down because not a lot of people can conceptualise that. So the concepts that you'll see with the antennas that are not assembled, we did put four back together ourselves and painted those in the dot style painting. And we also embellished those with Australian wool. And we have them cascading down because it represents the sound waves that they are collecting and the important data. So you know, it was the first time that we did a collaborative installation. There's 10 artists, um, Yamaji and Buddy Maya artists, who um, produce the antennas. And we were really pleased to get them shown in Perth and in the West Australian Museum last year. And now in the process has gone to being included in this exhibition. Yeah, for, for me it's, um, so it's obviously an object but it, for me it's so deeply multi-layered. I think of the radio waves that came from the gas that existed shortly after the Big Bang and those radio waves have travelled 13 billion years to hit the antennas and then be converted into data that we then interpret to understand essentially where we came from, where the universe came from. Uh, and they've existed in this environment in the Murchison which is an unbelievably beautiful environment so sort of coexistence of the ancient and the modern and the technology and the history and culture uh, and then for them to be transformed after yeah. doing that job into something with even more layers yeah. of energy and culture it's so they're not just objects they take for mm. me some you know, very yeah. Yeah. I, i'm not words can't really describe it for me um, but going back to one of the talks this morning, this blurring of the lines of the sacred and the secular. Um, so, some scientists think of science as a, a sacred activity and uh, you get that feeling, in, well I get that feeling at least out of collaborations like this. So it's, you know, it's been a great honour for me to be working with you guys and yeah, no. hopefully there's another yeah. seven years in it. Yeah. And this particular photo here was part of the process of um, when the antennas were coming down to the John Curtin University last year to be first displayed, we'd taken them down to the beach in Geraldton and we did a ceremony and we blessed the installation um, and this is what was happening there before we packed them into the vehicle and then drove them down. So it was a whole process around this, um, well, contemporary and modern objects that has been included today so and, and from today onwards yeah I'm not sure where it's going to go next but Charmaine does push the envelope a bit and the, the last uh, trip out to site in 2014 Charmaine had me writing poetry which was uh, confrontational for a physicist but uh, Charmaine is insistent and I did produce poetry and actually it wasn't wasn't too bad. Yeah. I, I actually enjoyed it and so yeah. getting out of one's comfort zone and doing some of these things is yeah. um, 
part of the whole creative process. Yeah, so that was that was good fun for us too, watching the scientists. <laughs> Squirm. Um, <laughs> watching the scientists trying to write poetry was, um, and then I made them perform it, by the way, yeah. with a guitarist. So yeah. um, that was the thing. But the whole idea of the antennas, and we, like I said earlier, we're very proud that these objects have been included, and it does tell a story. It tells a story where we can reclaim the right to tell our story and tell our collaborative story in this instant, um, which is the first time we've done it in this way. All the other paintings, the other ways that we've told our collaborative story is taking interest in what the scientists are telling us and um, painting paintings about nebulas, constellations and different galaxies that the Yamaji artists haven't seen before. But thank you very much for this afternoon. Yeah, thank you.